new means of uh, developed two means of uh, auditory communication, speech and music. And music is a unique human trait and is really important in uh, our society. Uh, cultures around the world uh, play instruments, uh, create music and dance, for example. Another important aspect of human communication is speech that allow us to interact uh, with each other. While speech and uh, music perception and production use the same system, it looks like at the level of the brain they are processed really differently. For speech, for example, it seems that it's more decoded in the left part of the brain, in the left auditory cortex. For music, it's more right lateralized. We try to answer fundamental questions about the processing of speech and music in the brain. First, to what extent these two domains depend on different neural mechanisms? Second, what is the origin of the lateralization observed? A cappella songs contain both sentence and melodic information and allows with only one stimuli to investigate how the brain processes both information at the same time. To answer our question, we set a study where we generate a cappella songs that contain both speech and music information, sentence and melody. We ask a professional composer to compose 10 uh, unfamiliar melodies. We then generated 10 unfamiliar sentences. We then went to a professional studio recording to ask a singer to sing these a cappella songs. At the total, we had 100 a cappella songs containing 10 different melodies and 10 different sentences. We decided to perform the behavioral part of the experiment with both French and English material and French and English participants. And the idea is to give this material to the researchers around the world uh, so that they can replicate the study or extend it. And it was also important to, to see how generalizable uh, these results are. This project is entirely um, open source. So we provide both the stimuli, um, the data, and the scripts. We then degraded these songs in either the temporal dimension or the spectral dimension, with the hypothesis that temporal degradations would affect participants' recognition of uh, the sentences, while spectral degradations should affect participants' recognition of the music. Participants were asked to compare pairs of a cappella excerpts. They listened to a first a cappella excerpt, then a silence, then a second a cappella excerpt. After this, they have instructions saying that they have to focus on the melody or the sentences. The pairs were always degraded, either in the temporal domain or in the spectral domain. The people thought a coin was hidden there. The people thought a coin was hidden there. The behavioral results show when temporal information was degraded, participants had trouble recognizing the sentences. In contrast, where spectral information was degraded, participants had trouble differentiating the melodies. To test how the brain responds to these different acoustical features, we asked participants to go for fMRI recording while listening to our a cappella excerpts that were degraded. When investigating the effect of the degradations, on brain activity, we observed that temporal degradations affected only the decoding of the sentences and only in the left hemisphere, while spectral degradations affected only the decoding of melodies and only in the right auditory cortex. This shows that different response to different low-level acoustical cues can explain the lateralization of speech and music information. The fact that the behavioral and uh, fMRI results were similar confirmed the importance of temporal information for speech comprehension and recognition and the role of spectral information for melody in, uh, comprehension. This can be considered as an elegant solution of the central nervous system to optimize the processing of two important communicative signals in the human brain that are speech and music.